Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X NGR Radio's Xbox Podcast. As always, we throw up the X because we are about to throw down. I am your host, Eddie V. Joining me is my wife, Wisconsinite, Mr. Jesse Douglas. How's it going, guys? And boss man himself, Mr. Corey Derrick at the NGR headquarters. I'm awake and I'm I'm here. I'm ready for gaming. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It is a new year, new day. Oh yeah, this is uh, the first show of the new year. Yes, yes. We took a a, a high well, not a high ages, but we took time to enjoy the holidays and our family. So we are back with some great Xbox news. I know we all been playing tons of games mr jesse douglas has blessed us with rainbow six siege and we have blessed him back in many ways so once again thank you jesse for that gift yeah you guys are welcome not in a way that he deserves so i feel bad because uh, i don't haven't, worry bu- haven't bought anything yet don't worry about it oh it's coming <laughs> it's coming <laughs> That's the best part about giving gifts is you, you know, not expecting anything in return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Because I was like, he got us something? Yeah, I turned ah, I well, got I, a message. I, I got a message through the Xbox app that says, you have received a gift. I'm like, oh, it's probably Xbox just sending me some, like, weird, like, driver suits for Forza 7 or something. <laughs> And I log on, and it's like, Rainbow Six Siege. I'm like, what? Oh. And it said, Jesse has sent you a gift. I'm like, no. I'll write it off on my taxes. <laughs> 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 no, because we talked about, you know, like trying to get more into doing, you know, like streams and stuff like that. And so I figured, you know, we, you know, there, at some point we'll all kind of have games that maybe one another doesn't have that we might end up picking up or whatever just to kind of to uh you know have more options of things that we can play and stuff and i I just think that would be a fun game to play as a group someday so i figured you know it was normally a hundred bucks and it was on sale for like a steal so i'm like i i couldn't pass up the offer so i figured it would be be kind of fun huh like but you bought two copies yeah but it still was cheaper than one would have been if it was wasn't on sale ah so i mean i i still say i still got two for the price of like less than the price of one what so nice. so i mean it was a there was a good deal going on and i just couldn't pass it up so nice nice well thank you very much <laughs> yeah no problem. yeah thanks jesse it was i'm i'm yeah. making my way through the situations right now it's so much fun it's like trying to really just like get like through it and and like you you're going through and you like i found the pistol kind of the most effective almost especially when you find guys that are just kind of hiding and kind of just you know staring in the other way and you just like pop them a couple times with the pistol and move on to the next area yeah and what's nice is i i kind of talked to Ed about it a little bit but they do have like they have multiplayer um styles of of games that you can play that are very similar to the situations Mm -hmm. but but you can play as a group to try to to uh, accomplish your the goal or whatever so yeah we can try those eventually once we we all can figure out a time to you know (laughs) <laughs> get together in games. So. On what time on a Saturday that we all get together? <laughs> that's probably the most side. Uh, <laughs> but it is good to be back, everybody. Thank you guys for checking out our new intro that our boss man has given us. Thank you, Corey. Um, we have a lot of things going on for 2018 for Arsenal X, but we're going to give you guys that at the end of the show about that. But as always, What's in your arsenal? We since we've been gone for two weeks, we had to be playing a ton of games. So Corey, I'm gonna start with you. What's in your arsenal, man? Uh, well, I finished Assassin's Creed Origins over the break, and yes. it was it. The ending was definitely worth the struggle of frame rate issues I had towards the end of that game. Man, dude, that game struggles sometimes. Uh, but it was it was great. The ending was great. 
And like, I'm not going to ruin anything because I know, Ed, I know you're still working on it and I don't know mm-hmm. if Jesse's going to play it or not or try to find a way to play it or whatever. But like, the way that game ends, I want a straight up full on sequel starring by ex wife. Like, oh, that would be just amazing. That honestly, that would be like the best Assassin's Creed gift for me as a fan of that series is just. You know, she's in Rome, obviously, like, I want to know, like, I just, I just want to know, I want to know, does she, like, meet any of the other assassins? Like, what happens? Like, I want to know. I need to know these things. So, Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to, like, really, really, really see a sequel to that game. So, Assassin's Creed Origins, definitely should try to play through it if you can. Uh, it's by far the my I think it's probably by far my favorite Assassin's Creed game now. Like I loved Black Flag and I still think Black Flag is amazing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this game just does a it has a lot of quality of life improvements. The combat's mm-hmm. better. The uh, RPG stuff really added a lot to that game. And uh, yeah that game is is really good and and i hope everybody gets a chance to play that so uh but other than that what else have i been playing oh i've been playing a little bit of rainbow six siege trying to get through the situation so we can actually play online together at some point uh i've been i played through the injustice 2 storyline also and that game is phenomenal if i mean i'm not even a fighting game fan and i know that game is great like the story was just dumb enough and comic booky enough to keep me interested and I like how they picked up kind of right where the series left off um I liked uh I just I just liked it I like the loot system I like being able to customize your fighters the way you want to mm-hmm. and uh yeah man it's great I love it uh so I cannot wait to see what the Ninja Turtles add to that game yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, Jesse. Before we go on, is our mascot ready? Is he sitting down? <laughs> yeah, he's over here making a making a nest for himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. uh, okay. Continue, Corey. <laughs> uh, but outside of outside of Xbox, I've been playing uh, Gravity Rush Remastered and trying to finish up the Zelda DLC and. Uh, Earth Atlantis, which is an indie game on Switch that Moose talks about all the time. Uh, yeah, if you listen I, to NGR proper, I added to my uh, wish list on my, my Switch. Yeah, so, uh, so I've been, I'm gonna get to that. Been playing that. I've been playing The End Is Nigh, which is a uh, single screen platformer where the the screen shifts as you you try to get through this each screen at a time, and you have to try to collect these little uh, cartridges and stuff. I talked a lot about it on. Uh, pow block uh yesterday uh when this posts so uh you should listen to that if you want to know more about that game uh that game is really great has a great art style great controls uh super meat boy team so uh really really solid platforming mechanics uh and uh that's about it for me uh thinking i sunk a ton of time into injustice and uh assassin's creed though Man, those games are great. Those games are so yeah, cool. I'm. I plan on getting Assassin's Creed for sure because, yeah, like I've been just kind of watching it and you know hearing people talking about it. Because, like I too, I didn't really get into the Assassin's Creed games too much. I did play Black Flag, and that one did hold my attention for a little bit, but. It, it really makes me glad to hear you say that they've kind of improved on like the uh, like the fighting and like that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. yeah I feel like uh, there's just certain things that in all the Assassin's Creed games that were good but they just didn't feel right and like I'm it sounds like they may have fixed a lot of those things that for me would probably make it make this game so much better, you know. So so I'm I am hoping to get that eventually. Yeah, this is well, it's it, it's I, I'm sorry, Ed. Oh, well I, I was about to say that 
it's more of an action adventure open world game. So like if you play like <laughs> like some of the earlier Ubisoft, Ubisoft like open world games, like you don't get punished for not doing stuff or anything. Um you you don't get you don't have to go up and attack them and then go hide in the crowd and stuff like that. You don't have to do none of that. It's you literally oh. could go to a base or fall into a base um and attack any way on how you wanna attack. Like you wanna do all arrows if you wanna do okay. just melee combat. Uh there's like no punishment for being seen or anything. Yeah. So it's, it's basically like just cause but only like in in the desert kind of like more like more like just cause where you can kind of battle and like just there's kind of like encampments or whatever yeah. randomly that you can just kind of go into and you don't have to so it's like more like that a more a little bit more open world versus like yeah. kind of more compact like the earlier one earlier ones are yeah it's not it's not strict on you being seen where okay. i think the other games like you had to kind of do stuff in the shadows and stuff okay okay yeah, uh, it's definitely it's definitely uh, it's an Assassin's Creed game for people who aren't necessarily Assassin's Creed fans. I would say because, uh, like, yeah. I know a lot of fans of the series were kind of actually disappointed in it, mm-hmm. uh, but that seems to be less people <laughs> these days. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, but, but that's all I've been really playing ton of time dude i think i ended up with like 60 something hours into that game and i still there's still whole areas of the map i haven't even explored or walked into so and those are just like side quests yeah so i might go back i might i'm thinking about trying 100 percent that game but that's gonna take a long time and yeah dude, with with all these games coming up like sea of thieves and crackdown and not to mention the slew of switch games we're gonna be talking about the next couple months like man yeah just in march alone like i said to you guys in chat earlier like yesterday or whatever march is like just loaded with games yeah and that (laughs) and that sweet sea of thieves controller yes yes we we will talk about that in arson news everybody so we'll get to that (laughs) so excited Uh, for that dumb controller close in the dark it close in the dark Corey, hush it I'm sorry. We get to it. We get to the news, but it, but it glows in the dark. Child, if we get some joy cons that glow in the dark, it's on and popping. I'm just letting you know that right now. Yeah, that like that uh, that glow in the dark green color or something. Ooh, Luigi Mansion for Switch. Oh, yeah, Come there on. you glow go. In the dark. Mm. Stop! Stop! I'm gonna go cry under the table. I want all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already gonna be done. I'm like, I need a collection right now. Jeez. I would, I would be at Gangst- <laughs> GameStop in, in the morning. I'll be late to work. Well, no, actually, I can't be. I gotta be there at six. I'll be like, uh, I need to order this like right now. <laughs> but they just announced it. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I try to get me to pre-order everything else. I want to pre-order these controllers. Uh, speaking of, of of Switch games, the Shantae uh, Day 1 edition, physical edition, was announced today and is up for pre-order on Amazon. Is that for Half Genie Hero? Yeah. There's all, th- all three systems are getting it, so... No, uh, no, Switch should only be getting it, because I thought it came out for... Uh... Xbox One and uh, PS4. Oh, the, or, uh, Amazon had it listed. Every had everything listed. Maybe they are. Maybe they're those versions are already out. Yeah, because PS4 got the the Wii U one had the uh, soundtrack, had, like the book, the game, and the soundtrack. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, gosh, I'm just do my best. You always do your best. I do my best. Can I tell you that I'm, I'm going to buy a day one when it comes to my job? <laughs> I did my oh. best. <laughs> You're the best. All right. 
<laughs> I can't really think. I don't, can't think of the rest uh, of the movies. No one, no one can. It's like all you get up to that certain point. No exactly. one can remember what the lyrics are. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else that you've been playing, Corey? Or that's no, that's pretty it. much. That's pretty much it. All right, Jesse, what's been in your arsenal, dude? I've got a lot of games that I like a bunch that I actually played and and games that I want to play and I've obviously been playing some uh siege and stuff you know occasionally here mm-hmm. uh just like doing fooling around on uh twitch and just trying to learn how that that works because i you know, I just really haven't used any of that kind of stuff. You know, I just really didn't have a need for it too much. But, um, so yeah, I played some Siege and, um, I got the Modern Warfare remastered that I need to play yet, which I'm probably going to do today after we're done recording. Is that um, the, uh, from the Infinite Warfare Legacy Collection? I think? Yeah, yeah. I, I found it used, the Infinite uh, Warfare. I found a used copy that had both of them in it, and it was oh. only like like 20, 28 bucks for the two of them. And so, like, that's, yes. that's like cheaper than what it would have costed just to buy um, Modern Warfare uh, yeah. remastered by itself. So. Were they both on this, or were... yeah, it's both. Yeah, it's, so from what I understand, what he said, what the guy at, at uh, GameStop, I actually went to GameStop for it, said was um, the the Xbox version all is it's all on the disc. Basically, when you pop the disc in, mm-hmm. it downloads what needs to be downloaded for Infinite Warfare, and then it also instantly starts uh, the Modern Warfare Remastered to download. So they both like that the disc triggers both of them to download. But with PlayStation 4, I think you actually got a code with it to download the Modern Warfare Remastered. So th- those, you couldn't resell them that way. With both games, you would, lit- you know, obviously only be able to have the Infinite Warfare game because that code would no longer be useful. So so, so for it's Xbox just... people, it's nicer because you can get both of them like that used. So Okay. Cause wasn't it like an exclusive deal first with Sony before Xbox? Yeah, got it? six months or ninety days yeah. or something. Yes. Yeah. So in the end, it actually ended up biting those people in the butt because they couldn't resell it with both, whereas Xbox could. So I guess yes. I'm kind of glad that they got it last. <laughs> <laughs> it's better for better for me than in the long run, but. Um, well, Eric- I know where people were mad because they wanted the Modern Warfare uh, remaster, like by itself. They didn't want it because I think yeah. for Sony, you you were stuck that in order for you to get it, you had to buy the full game. Yeah, and then eventually they re they released it by itself, you know. Now, yeah. but the thing is, is uh, like I said, it it costs the same amount though for me to basically have both of those games. Versus, which I don't know though if, if there was maybe some uh, uh, downloadable content that maybe was included with the the re- the re-release. I don't know, but uh, it don't matter. I, I mean, don't care. it it was well, there wasn't really exclusive. Besides that, it came out the Sony first before Microsoft. Okay, and I think it was still content that you had to pay for anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I you know, I got a couple of games yet. I. I did. My son got uh, Lego Dimensions for uh, for Christmas, and so we we set that up. And uh, you know, I was me and him worked together to to build the portal and stuff. Mm-hmm. That you know, you have to put the Legos together to put on the base, and and I kind of got him started with that, and was just kind of letting him play that and try to learn how to play that. But I played with him a little bit as well, you know, to kind of help him out a little bit, learn how things are done. Um, so I got to play that with him. Um, we played, uh, I played a whole bunch of Switch games, uh, with him too. Um, I ended up getting the other day, uh, the Resident Evil games, the, what's it called? What are they called now? Revelation. Yeah. 
the Revelation collection for Switch. Um, I started that up. I played like the very beginning of it. I didn't get too far in it yet because uh, I just was trying it out and making sure everything's downloaded that needs to download and all that stuff. All the episodes. But, yeah. And then I played, but I did play Rayman Legends for like probably a good hour the other day, and because so I have it on I have it on Xbox, but I, I it's it's a bummer. I wish there was a way that you could like between the two have the uh, save the same save, you know, to be able to use between the two of them. Yeah. Because unfortunately, I'm, I'm gonna probably end up playing it more on my Switch than I am on my Xbox, only because I can, you know, bring it with me. But, but yeah, that's that's like a perfect, you know, platforming game to play on on the go. So, you know, I wanted to pick that up again for Switch. Um, and then I played through the full demo of the game on Switch. The uh, what is it called? Ender's. Uh, of Miram or whatever. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. It it was different. Something, you know, different that I don't really have any kind of games like it right now. So I'm probably going to pick the full game up eventually. It's only 20 bucks. Um, but, but they, I was impressed with the demo because they really let you experience quite a bit of, of like the stuff that you're going to go through throughout the game and they actually threw in a boss battle at the end and everything of the demo. So oh, nice. that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's kind of a weird game. I'm not really used to like having to, you know, use both joysticks going different directions at the same time and like you kind of got to pass through stuff that are like there's two different colors of your character and no. those two things can only go through the, those colors in order yeah. to pass through to, to to eventually then you merge back together again as your character and then you can continue doing the the platforming part of the game but then which is which is weird cuz it's supposed to be like l- white and black but yeah. it but going through the crystals it's purple and green yeah and like yeah the white one is not green it's <laughs> just like that well that's a weird odd choice but okay yeah well i think what it is is there's a hint there's hints of those colors and like if you once you play the demo like if you play the demo you'll Uh kind of learn why why your different colors and all that stuff because like the one character is like a white with green in it so that's where the green part comes in and then the other one is black and purple so that's where the the kind of the colors. So they they are they are you know light and dark or whatever, but they have that hint of those the green and purple in them. So that's kind of where those colors come from, I believe. But um, but yeah, like they kind of explain. It's like I said, it's pretty basic. Like the, like the story by no means is like super in depth or anything, but but it it looks really good. And like from what I've played, it plays really well. Yes. And and it it may be kind of more on the basic side, but but I found it to be pretty entertaining. So, like a uh, action, well, more of a adventure puzzle kind of game. Yeah, it's yeah, it's an, it's like an adventure puzzle, like platforming puzzle kind of thing. But yeah, yeah the I mean, dra- for twenty bucks, it, it seems like it will be pretty decent for twenty bucks. So they they remind me of how to train your how to train a dragon. <laughs> yeah, it does because you kind of glide. You've got like wing, like not r- like you can't fly per se, but you you have like wing ish things yeah. that come off of your legs that allow you to like kind of float. Because there's yeah. parts where you have to float and kind of move through through obstacles and try to you know not get hit by stuff, but yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, I think they did a good job on it, and it and it's you know it seems entertaining enough. So mm, cool. Anything else? I think that's pretty much it. No, yeah, I think that's it. Nothing about Nazis or... Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. There's like a million different... Yeah, I started playing uh, Wolfenstein 2 and so much better than the first one. Like, I 
I enjoy the first one. Like, don't get me wrong, but it like I like I'll play it and I'll get to certain points where I'm just like, okay, I'm kind of ready to just set put this down, you know. And mm-hmm. but when I started that one, like it's just so entertaining. Like in the beginning, going around in the uh, wheelchair and stuff, yeah, it was hilarious. And like, and then like, there was one part though that I got stuck. Like I thought I somehow progressed somewhere where I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. yet and like because i for whatever reason i was missing this area that i could go in to get into the next part and so like once i got upstairs this is like a part where i'm in the wheelchair and i'm like oh crap i i think i must have gotten up here and i wasn't supposed to or something and so then i'm trying to get back down to where i previously was and i couldn't i'm like well <sighs> couldn't have let me progress somehow and you know without me being able to yet so i was just looking around and i finally figured out what i was missing i don't it was kind of just one of those weird little things where i got lost but oh, but i mean that game if once i started playing it though i i was like i don't know i sat down for probably like two three hours was playing a whole bunch of it so i'm really enjoying it so far yeah, I need to return to it and uh, finish it up, get back to it. <sighs> yeah, I'm sure there's other games I played too that I'm just not even thinking of. Oh, I I know I like tonight I might start it too. I did get finally get Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I haven't started that yet, so I need to start that. So you start that now after the show. <laughs> yeah, there's I'll like wait. a million. That's the thing. I have like a million games that I that I just recently got because of you know like christmas money and and uh like got so because we just had our third christmas this weekend so <laughs> finally got games because all my other christmas things i didn't really get any games or anything just oh, you know some cash or whatever but um cash which is games. fine because like i said i i have so many games now that i that i need to start it's like i don't need any more right now because i would like to get mario odyssey i would like to get you know, like I do, I'm still thinking about maybe getting snipper clips because that's something I could play with my wife or the kids or whatever. Because I, you know, that's the nice thing with the Switch is there's a lot of good options for uh, playing with other people. You know, that don't aren't necessarily gamers per se. Mm-hmm. So that's one nice thing about that. So there's stuff like that I'm kind of trying to find too that I can do you know as a group of people when we get together so Snipper in person awesome. but yeah I know it, it looks like so much fun I've been wanting yes. to get it since it came out but I just I just haven't <coughs> sorry I haven't gotten around to it so but yeah I think that's about it Okay, um, so I'm actually going to start with Switch and then end it with one. Uh, so for Switch, I'm going to ask the usual playing the Mummy D Master. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Game is completely amazing. The the comedy, the writing and the comedy in this game is so top notch. I, I just love this game. It is making me laugh. It's, I'm putting the work in for the grind. The worlds are just so amazing seeing it on, t- on my TV. I'm like, oh, this game looks beautiful in motion. Uh, I still haven't got any new blades yet. I'm waiting for some stuff to pass so I can start getting some new blades. Um, because uh, one of the parts that I'm in is that the titan that I, I that I'm on uh, ate me. He sucked me up. So now I'm in the titan's belly, trying to get out of it. And uh, the Titan who ate some other people, they they actually have land in a town there. So they're living inside of the belly of the Titan and stuff. And you get in there and you just see like the vast mountains and walkways and stuff like that. Like you don't see organs and uh, getting close to acid and stuff. You don't you don't see none of that. It was just like it's the land in the Titan itself. 
that is in this this tight of stomach. It is it's amazing to uh to look at it. But yeah, the characters are great. Um, the story is getting really interesting, um, and I can't wait because it's only they say it's only ten chapters. So seven more chapters, I'll be done with the game. But they said there's so much side stuff to do, uh, and plus I want to buy more stuff and do more quests for the town people because the more that you do for the town that star's rating would go up so they'll offer you better equipment and better swords and stuff like that so uh, i'll be i'll be playing more of that um started up breath of the wild for switch just it's me and corey talked about this so many times on why it's game of the year and i i think i i agree with corey that this is probably my favorite zelda of all time like it's I not think just it, my favorite Zelda of all time. It might be my favorite game of all time. You know how people yeah. like talk about how like Skyrim is their favorite game of all time because they can go yeah. anywhere and they can play multiple ways and do multiple things. Like Yes. That's how I feel about Breath of the Wild. And like like I said on the NGR Game of the Year show, uh not only did this generation give me or this or 2017 give me you know some of the best games of 2017 that i've ever played like it gave me like multiple games that will be in my top 10 forever yes and like i know xbox show whatever i don't care zelda zelda it might be one of my favorite it's it's possible that that game is my favorite game of all time you know and like Look, we're hitting 10 months already on Switch. Like, this week was 10 months. And I'm still playing that game. Like, I'm literally still playing that game and debating whether or not to create a new profile on my Switch to play that game again. Plus, the Master Mode, I'm thinking about diving into Master Mode. Well, Corey, um, it's still one of the highest attach rates to the system. I know. Like, people who are... People who bought a Switch this holiday bought Zelda. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't Odyssey, it it was Zelda, mm-hmm. and it's it's just uh, everything from this game from just all aspiring like just you my mouth still is just a gape just looking at stuff in motion and just looking at stuff in the distance that's moving. I'm like, goodness, the art team in this what they put in this game just it still blows my mind yeah and it's just still so good i it i don't think there's no game in 2017 that could beat it now there i mean there's other great games that did come out that did a lot for 2017 but i'm just like i feel like this game if it had any flaws that all has been rectified when they did the updates and so now the frame rate is constant you know that was the only problem I actually had with Zelda, which is sometimes the frame rate would drop. But you know that's expected to happen, um, and it it got better. I feel like now that the game is in a very stable state, uh, just going around that world, going through those shrines again, and just just being amazed on what they input in this game that I still haven't found yet, but cannot wait to adventure in. It's just mind-blowing. Like, so, yeah, uh, diving into that. Uh, For PS4, um, played a lot of Final Fantasy, The Zodiac Age, um, close to beating the game, but I I still want to unlock everybody's board, and I we got there's some magic and stuff that I need to go find. So there's some strategy guys I got to look at online on how to get them. Uh but really enjoying that game. Wolfenstein 2, I play uh gotta just get further into that. Titanfall 2, I got uh like for six bucks brand new for uh PS4. Loving that game still. It's my contra. <laughs> Uh, just in 3D, it's, it's just so fun to play running on walls and shooting. I was just moving around like, yes, I'm playing it on easy because I'm trying to just collect the helmets and stuff. So, because I already, like I said, I already beat it on Xbox One. Um, 
So playing that picked up Yakuza Zero and Psychonauts, Final Fantasy Seven and Nine, uh, on PlayStation Four. Haven't started none of those just yet, but well, can't wait to really jump in. And I'm the Bioshock Bioshock collection I got for PS4, and I'm getting ready to jump into that. Uh, last but not least, Xbox One, of course, Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, working through that. Uh, picked up Cuphead, and me and Jesse. We talked about it. We're trying to figure out, like, is this game like online co-op? No, it's not. It's only local, so you you got to sit by another person in order to play it. Uh, it, it it's giving me good contra vibes. I I'm loving the game. And, it, and uh, it, it's funny. Me and Jesse, we were talking. I think last Saturday, or the, no, the yeah, Saturday before was, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Um, Right, because you was out of town um, one Saturday. But we we were just talking, and he's playing. Uh, no, yeah, we were trying to get Siege to work, and Siege was, yeah. wasn't working on my sister, so we had that problem. So uh, um, um, Jesse's playing Siege, I'm playing Cuphead, and I'm just destroying bosses. I'm, I mean, I'm dying, but I'm, cause I'm. This is the first time. I'm like, okay, I'm learning the pattern, so I expect myself to die. That's fine. I was just sitting right there in the zone, which just like, yeah, th- this is my game, <laughs> and it was just like I gotta get my old contra skills back. And me and Jesse, we have different control options. Uh, yeah. configurations on how we do it so my x button is to shoot my b button is to jump and then my right trigger is to dash um and it's kind of almost like my mega man x setup where i have to have my dash button uh underneath this my like what they call it the trigger finger right there um because if I want to dash in the air or anything, I have quicker access doing this instead of pressing another button. Um, because my thumb is holding down my X to shoot, and underneath it, uh, my thumb would be my B button. I um, mean, not my yeah, my B button for me to jump in case. So yeah, I was enjoying that. I was beating fools. I was parrying like crazy. Um, I, I was just in that good old uh, shoot 'em up vibe. And I was just like, ah, oh, this this reminds me of Contra Treasure Games. Just like, ah, oh, I need this, I need this genre to come back. Uh, <laughs> so, I w- I've been playing, having fun with that. Uh, going to get into Super Lucky's Tale. I know I've been mentioning it, but I have my copy. I have it on wrap, and I just got to get it installed uh, for there. But I am going to be starting on that, and I'm going to be starting Lost Odyssey and Earthlock. I'm trying to finish working on that game. So, uh, that's all for what I'm doing on Xbox. I also need to do uh, Mafia 3 on Xbox and... Um, there was another game that I brought that I need to start. Shadow of War, I need to start also. Uh, I have that installed, uh, but I need to uh, start it and everything. Because I took like Watch Dogs 2 and, and some of my old games that I beat already. I took that off the system. I'm like, I'm not going to play this because I already beat it. So Yeah, I purged some of my games last night too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't get well. I think Rise is, uh, I think Rise is still on on it, uh, and the original Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Like, but I just, I literally do just took off DMC, Devil May Cry. Like, I literally just took it off the system. Just like, well, I'm like, well, I really can't do nothing else besides try to collect, you know, get them stronger and get everything. But I'm like, I already beat this and I'm not playing it, so it's just sitting on my system. Oh, and the Justice too. I did start I start that up too, um, and I'll be playing more of that like later on down the line. So, yeah, I got to get back into that more too, because I I've only played a little bit of it, and I just yeah, I really I really need to stick some time into that too, because there yeah, I do like the whole like upgrading your character uh, aspect of the game, so it's kind of neat. Yes, yes. So, everybody, that's what's been in our arsenal. Uh, we want to know what's been in your arsenal for the holiday season. You guys can email us at arsenalxpodcast at gmail.com or join our Facebook page on Arsenal X or our new Twitter page 
at Arsenal X Podcast on Twitter. Let us know what's been in your arsenal. Go ahead and also subscribe to NGR Radio and uh, check us out on NGRRadio.com. Uh, we would love to hear your guys' voice and your opinions and all the stuff that you guys been playing. We want to know and show us some of your swag too. I want to see what your what you got for the holidays. It would be real cool to see what you guys been blessed with on the Microsoft. And even if you guys didn't get anything Microsoft brand, I would love to see what you got from Nintendo, your PC, or even your uh, Sony platforms. Yeah, I want to see what games. Heck, I'll take some board games too. The uh, Zelda Monopoly, <laughs> if you got that, <laughs> you know. So, uh, <laughs> Corey, don't shake your head. No. <laughs> uh, so, hey, it is all gaming. It's all love. So we're going to get into some arson news, and boy, was there uh, a lot of it. Um, the vanishing of e- of Ethan Carter is coming. To, uh, is on Xbox One, I believe, is on there now. Uh, and it's coming with 4K support and free roll, uh, free roam mode. Uh, and a lot of I know a lot of this of this game. Um, it, a lot of people really liked it. It won us some awards and stuff. But on January nineteenth, uh, it's uh, that's when the game is coming out. Uh, this will be supporting Xbox One's X 4K HD output. Um, so you guys will be able to check that out. Are you guys thinking of picking it up for uh for Xbox One? I I honestly I don't know anything about it yet. Um, I definitely will look into it though. Yeah, it was like I don't know. It was one of those games that came to PS4, and I was just kind of like, I mean, people liked it, but it wasn't like enough to like get my attention, and I don't think it's going to change anything for me. Okay, I know it's a like a walking simulator kind of story. Um, oh, okay. Some people were moved by it, and I'm just like. Please don't let this be like uh, going going home, because I'll be like, if it is, I'm like, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, and I unfortunately I don't really get into those kind of games too much. Like my like, if anything, my wife would probably be more into that because she she likes those uh like she used to get on her DS all the time those the games where you you have like the room and then you can click on stuff and you kind of trying to solve like mysteries and stuff like that so she it's probably more up her alley (laughs) (laughs) than me so but i'll look into it though either way i'm always i always like to just check out things because who knows might be something that i that i end up liking so yes so jesse asks it's funny that you're wearing, wearing your titans out uh, jersey and it's actually Titus because winning the football league is coming not only to PS4 but Xbox yes. One on January 16th. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I loved that. I loved the Mutant League football games. Uh. Yes, <laughs> Digital Dreams Entertainment have announced that the retro revamp Mutant League football, uh, Mutant Football League will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One on January 16th. The game is the indie dream driven remake of the 90s classic Mutant League football, which featured teams of fantasy creatures crushing skulls and turning quarterbacks into broken backs. Uh, Mutant Football League brings the classic format to modern platforms while retaining all violence, guts, and gore of the original. The game features 18 bloodthirsty teams and 18 death trap filled stadiums as well as exhibition play in a full season mode. Up to four players can rip each other to shreds locally or two players can go ahead to here online. Five mouth commentary is provided by Tim Kisrow of NBA Jam Fay. Uh, All I can say is during the like NES and SNES time, like you know, when the original Mutant League football came out and super high impact and uh-huh. get out of here with your uh <clears throat> your other football games. I don't care about them. Uh, like <laughs> that to me, like th- you know, that's the thing, like uh, when I play like football or sports games like that online or on, yeah. on, on video games, I want something that's like, 
you know, entertaining and, you know, and like, because just the regular sports games just don't do it for me too much. I mean, you know, there's times where I played like the hockey games because the hockey games can be fun to play with uh, friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Like on, I think on N64 we played because then you could have four people playing. Uh-huh. But, but, uh, yeah, the, those like the Mutant League football and Super High Impact, those are such great games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Corey, are you any interest for you? No, not really. If it, was, <laughs> if it was on Switch, no, I don't even think I would get it there. I don't know. It just, <sighs> I don't know. I, I to, uh, this is gonna sound it's okay. No, it's no, okay. no. This is gonna sound like real dumb and real like stupid and like I don't know. But I'm too big of like a football fan to like play a quote unquote fake version of football. Mm-hmm. You know, I would rather just play Madden or the old NCAA games than this. Like, even Tecmo Bowl now, I just can't, like, I can't I can't bring myself to zigzag as Bo Jackson anymore, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If they would bring back NFL 2K, I'd be much more uh, excited about that happening. But... I just don't see it happening like that. Like that's why that's why I personally am just like done with football games is because that that was the only like real football style game that I absolutely loved. And then when they when they basically were told that they couldn't make a games anymore, I was just like whatever. I'm I'm well, whoever you know. I'm not gonna support Madden and it. It was because of when uh, that last one came out. It was only twenty bucks, so it undercut Madden by thirty whole dollars. Yeah. So uh, everybody had and was arguably one. the better game for most people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did so, you yeah. EA? Did you play that? Speaking of uh, NFL 2K, did you play the All Pro Football game that came out? Like for three sixty, I never got a chance to. I never got a chance to. That game, but that game was pretty awesome. Yeah, you I, you did tell me about it, and I've kind of wanted to look into it. Unfortunately, my I like every three sixty I own doesn't play discs, so like I would have to buy it if they have, and I doubt they have it in the store anymore on on three sixty. But yeah. But that's my. That's the only. I like. I. I know it's kind of late now to do it, but I kind of. I might once they drop down in price, I might buy one of the uh, the newer three sixties because I all my three sixties are the original ones. Oh, the, the big, the big fat ones with the <laughs> with the adult HD drive. Yeah, yeah, with the big drive that you have to clip at the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so I mean that's why they like none of them work right because they're all so old and just <laughs> you know it wasn't a very reliable uh, hardware in the first place. But I would like to get I would like to get a new one eventually, like once they're like fifty bucks or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was fu- exactly. It's funny because like the store, the local like used game store by me was like they were giving away xbox 360s if you bought five xbox 360 games at 15 dollars or more so if you bought yeah well game GameStop during the um uh during black friday Friday. they they had it where you you got one for free with a mail-in rebate right so you basically you bought one for like 50 bucks or something like that and then you sent in the rebate and ended up just getting it free getting all your money back yeah uh Man, 360. What a great system that was. What a... Mm. I miss that system. I don't. Ed, your opinion doesn't matter. <gasps> I miss my. I miss <laughs> Xbox 360. I love that system. It is. It is yeah, it... It's just the Wii was better. It did. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> my, my only argument is I... I Ed, go back to sleep. Just to... <laughs> In general, I, I wish that that Microsoft would have supported the Connect more than they did. To be honest, I like I I don't know. I just feel like so many good games could have been made with the Connect. 
because it like as much as I liked the Wii, the Wii, and mm-hmm. the Wii Sports and stuff like that, it still did it better, I think, in my opinion. But the Connect did. But was was, was Viva Pinata a uh, part of Connect or that was like split? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, there. <sighs> I don't remember. I thought they had. There's. I know there's some games like that that you know Xbox is known for that they had like a connect like style like, mm-hmm. like break off game that really wasn't part. But like for me, it was Reketeers. There was a game called Reketeers for uh, 360, and it, like was basically like a almost like like Angry Birds, yeah. But but it was um like like 3D. And you you you'd aim your catapult thing like wherever, and then shoot like the rock thing, and and there was different you know motions that you had to do to shoot the you know shoot it or whatever, yes. and then cer- certain things that you shot uh, had different abilities, and like one of them that was really cool is there was like the your thing that you shot almost looked like a scare a beetle or whatever, uh-huh. and. <laughs> And you, like then you, what you could do is it would shoot, and it would fly like a regular like stone projectile. Mm-hmm. But then once you got to a certain area, you put your arms out, and then wings would pop out of it. And then you would had to like tilt your arms and fly it to where you wanted to, you know, and stuff like that to take out parts of the castle. Because in that game, you were taking out castles that had these like ogres or or something in, like that in them. So, so I mean, it, was... it basically was like Angry Birds, but but it was 3D, you know, and, oh, okay. and way better say, in my opinion. Look, I would say it's the equi- uh, equivalent of Lair, but better, but actually playable. <laughs> yeah, it, it was an it was an amazing game. It, it was so much fun. And, like I, that was like the main thing that I played on my, like like it, to me, it was my Wii Wii Sports of of uh, of the Connect. And the Connect. Like that was the only game that I played, and I played it like all the time when I when I had it. Oh, so. I would pay so much money to come see you and just dance. Oh, not just dance, <laughs> dance central. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, I used I'm, to play Dance oh. Central all the time. Oh, I need to see video of you <laughs> playing Dance Central. Nope. Yeah, yeah, I won't. I won't. Like, one, I'm white, and two, I, I <laughs> can't dance. Can't dance at all. I've never, never tried. The only time I've ever danced, uh, like, you know, b- like on my own, like chose to dance was during our wedding. Like during my wedding, I actually danced quite a bit, which was was unusual because I just do not. You just can't like weddings. It doesn't matter. You can't yeah. get me to to go dance. It just doesn't interest me. But well, but I, on I my think wedding, like, I danced all night. We had I, I actually had a lot of fun. Well, I I know just dance is kind of simple. I think dance central. Uh, I think you would like it too. Um, it, it's kind of it's a little bit more technical, uh, but it's a good workout. It's like it, it's not that too. It's not that bad. Yeah, but this, yeah. My kid, my kids like to do. My they'll like they'll watch. My son just watches the uh, like the YouTube videos of uh, just dance. Uh-huh. Like and and then him and my my daughter will just like dance to like what they're doing. You don't even need to buy the game. Just throw the <laughs> throw the songs on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll dance to them. They don't care. Uh, but I could just see Corey doing it, <laughs> doing just dance or dance central. <laughs> Only reason because you're like very tall, uh, and I would just like to be like, oh, he's on me. Okay, this lumbering tree is just moving, <laughs> doing these easy steps. <laughs> hey man, don't judge me. I was awesome. And by awesome, I mean by myself. Nobody can tell. <laughs> what is it? it reminds me of this joke I heard, like on a radio station uh, today. There, like, is one of the things where they're coming back from commercial and and going into the, you know, playing the music, and they're like, dance like no one's watching, because nowadays everyone's looking at their phone anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I, I just dance for me is like a workout. I, I of course, 
as a choreographer. Um, I I'm like always on beat, and you get done of it, you be like, who? <laughs> it gets tiresome. You be like, goodness, th- this simple thing I should have I should have been able to do. No, three minutes take the wind out of you if you haven't been dancing in a while. So it's a good workout game, but <laughs> but moving from dancing. To the Sea of Thieves controller. Yes, Microsoft unveils the yes. suite of uh, uh, Sea of Thieves controller. It glows it... in the dark. <laughs> Wait one second, Corey. Uh, sea, what? Of Thieves, sea of Thieves, where swashing, uh, swashbuckling multiplayer pirate game is coming out soon. If you're excited about this game, uh, the Sea of Thieves themed limited edition controller is coming out even sooner. And it looks real snazzy. And it glows um, in the dark. <laughs> the control, the controller features a deep purple translucent design along with green that looks like sprinkled sand. The green skull in the middle is also. It glows in the dark. <laughs> Another interesting aesthetic feature is how the right trigger is gold, almost like a single golden tooth in a pirate's grin. The controller becomes available on February 6th and is priced at $74.99. Uh, Steel Thieves releases for Xbox One and PC on March 20th. But does it glow in the dark? It glows in the dark. Dude, I hope they make a. I want a special edition of Sea of Thieves where they just have like a big pirate ship. It just. The game comes in a pirate ship. <laughs> that would be sweet. Just say it. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Like and I hope it glows wheels. in the dark. I no, I hope it's made by Power Wheels and you can just drive it right. Oh, <laughs> Did you just- <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> With controller in hand. Uh, I do not want I to called it to and I called it because uh, a lot of people are like, "Why is the why is the uh, that one uh, trigger button gold? I don't get it." I'm like, "Well, I'm like, I was like thinking about it. I'm like, well, it's, I'm guessing they're trying to like copy because you know, like in all the movies and stuff, the pirates always have gold teeth or whatever." Yeah. And so I was right. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys think about the controller itself? You guys seen the picture? Um, is this something that you guys would like to pick up or uh do you think it's something kind of uh a nice creative design on microsoft part i definitely want to get it i i've been like basically planning like the second that i have the extra money i'm probably going to grab one so because I've been needing a, another controller, and mm-hmm. I've I've like literally since the this has been like released, the uh, you know the picture of it and and them talking about getting, I've been like, oh, I want this so bad. Every time I see it, I'm just like, oh, I want to get this because it, it just it's so unique. Like, because I mean, like Xbox has some of the coolest looking controllers in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. as far as you know, custom stuff. Like I, I still have my uh, Titanfall one from the first Titanfall, but um, all oh, that really yeah, cool this, like white and orange one. Yeah, yeah, I got it. That's awesome. I love. Yeah, that yeah I, I, I loved it, and, and I like you know like Titanfall so much, so I had to get that one. But yeah, it's kind of the same though. Like this, this one is just like over the top. They really went out of their way to to make it look really unique. So. Yeah. I have a feeling it's gonna sell pretty well. Yeah. Even if people it. don't even if people don't <laughs> buy Sea of Thieves, like literally just get it just because it looks awesome. See, I think I, like, well, I think it's gonna yeah, sell. Go I think that that controller, I think people are gonna be picking up Sea of Thieves and the controller at the same time. And they're just gonna yeah. be like, Oh man, this is really gonna get me into the game and like Yeah, man, I dude, I've been like getting like more and more excited for Sea of Thieves. Like just every Every, like, there hasn't been a week in the last like month or so that I haven't thought about that game at least a little bit. Yeah, yeah, same here. I just, it just, it seems to be like it's gonna be the, the perfect kind of game that you can like screw around with your friends, like and laugh. Like, yeah, and laugh, but like it'll, you know, it'll be difficult, and like you've got to actually work together to do stuff. But at the same time, you don't 
have to be serious about it. You can just enjoy, like, actually playing and having fun. And, you know, just, like, it's not something where you're going to care about dying or you're going to care about, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just going to be, like, a fun kind of, you know, kind of similar to, like, like, uh, your, your, uh, Minecraft and stuff like that, where it's, like, there's stuff you can do, and and if you want to be really serious about it, you can, but at the end of the day, like, you're going to find yourself just having more fun, just fooling around and just, you know, enjoying, enjoying just being social with people online and stuff, so, (laughs) yeah, it it, it looks so much fun. you. The game provides the fun, but you guys make the fun and the hijinks yeah. and the comedy. Because I think, like, the earlier trailers, like, when they show people or live or actors or whatever playing the game, their, their fun that they're having is, like, really selling the game that, you know, this is what you're going to be doing uh, or this is an option that you guys could do in the game. And it looks like that message is being so uh, for this game because I'm interested in playing it. I I know that uh, between us three, if uh, we all playing, there's just gonna be so so much hijinks, and I'm probably gonna be laughing loud. I'm probably gonna be falling off my bed because we're probably gonna be doing some stupid stuff or doing some stuff that we know good and well that we don't understand, but we're just making mistakes and stuff because we're still trying to learn the game and like, and just have a ball. Yeah. Like I like the whole the addition that they added where you know like if the if you get, the boat gets hit enough times like it can knock holes in the side of it and then mm-hmm. people have to try to fix up the holes while people are bailing water out and stuff like that like all that all that stuff just seems like it could be so much fun and like you know people like just laughing and and having a good time with it so and then yeah, Ed, Ed falls asleep while we're playing together, and and then we just like leave him <laughs> on a random island somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we push him and try to get him to go and shoot him out of a cannon. See, yeah. that's Matt. That's Matt right there. If he had this game, he would fall. He would fall asleep. <laughs> I would not. I would. I would not fall asleep with the controller in my hand or with the headset on. Just me not moving. So y'all just gonna pick me up and throw me on a random. I'd be like. Mm, how about a couple weeks ago when we were playing Assassin's Creed and fell asleep? Oh, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, dude! No, but I we was we wasn't playing the game anymore. We were just chatting. No, I was playing, and then you were just weren't there. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, probably fell asleep. Uh, it, it happens. It I know, literally happens. But it was just funny. <laughs> uh, that's earlier, Matt, when we'd be on NGR just talking. And he has glasses on. He just did <laughs> asleep live. <laughs> yeah, like the first, epi- the first episode of NGR we ever did was the E3 episode. And uh-huh. like he took a nap like halfway through it. <laughs> and then woke up at the end. Like seriously, if you go back to episode zero, he like you just don't hear Matt for like probably like forty minutes. <laughs> oh, and then we're like this, and we are on like we're on like is he asleep? You showed up for us. I was just like, okay, Matt, you get your rest because you work hard, dude. We love you, Matt. But the key, check him out as host of Nurse Going Wrong Radio. Check out. Yeah, doesn't he have right? like? Doesn't he have like three three jobs or something like that? <laughs> yeah, he I has think too so. Many jobs. He got to work hard. He hustle. So, <laughs> but sad news, everybody. Microsoft has officially discontinued the USB adapter to allow the Connect 2.0 to work on the Xbox One S and on Xbox One X. Um, the adapter was given away for free to any user who upgraded from the base Xbox One to the Xbox One S. <laughs> I'm so mad about this. I was talking to Corey about this earlier. Uh-huh. I do not. I was so mad that it costed like 60 bucks to buy one brand new. And now I go on eBay and they're like 130 freaking dollars because everyone that grabbed any is like selling them for three times the amount now. 
and I if I ever want to upgrade that means I'm gonna just be stuck using the connect on my my regular Xbox one now because I'm not gonna spend I don't care I want one but I'm not gonna spend no 130 bucks for one I'm <laughs> sorry I'm <sighs> I'm so mad about that. I'll, che- I'll check around. There's a bunch of stores here that still have a ton of okay. them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, I yes. see. I looked around here and I called like some places and I and no, no one said they had any. So for like yeah, I, for like such a big like kind of metropolitan area that I live in, nobody seems to really care about video games. Anything that's like remotely hard to find, I can usually walk into Best Buy and find it, or like one of the used stores around here. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, okay. Um, uh, users who did not fit that criteria could buy an adapter for the low, low cost of forty dollars. Um, the company stopped this promotion in October of last year, around the same time they confirmed that Connect production had ended. Uh, now that the adapter cannot be purchased at all, no longer appeared on Microsoft Store, Amazon, Best Buy, or other retailers that previously sold the adapter. Microsoft confirmed that production on the adapter has ended. There aren't many Kinect games, but those that remain have either been patched to work with the traditional controls or will just remain unplayable on newer Xbox One variations without the adapter. Um, the Xbox One dashboard has not supported Kinect controls since 2016 for anything other than voice commands most of the most of which aside from turning the system on cannot be done with any headset so it's sad and it, it's so funny that you mentioned that um uh jesse i actually had a customer come in my job uh asking about the connect and um they never sit the single connects when even when we got the first xbox one um we didn't even get that bundle that had the connect built inside of it. Oh, okay. So, it, they just said that's like the regular Xbox, and I think they had a game bundle for one of them. But yeah, we didn't get that uh, special edition, and uh, throughout that whole time, they didn't send us no connects. We still had connects for the regular 360, but that was it. Yes, yeah, so I had a customer come literally in and ask me, and I told them, I was just like, well, they don't use the Connect anymore. And if you really want one, I'm like, you have to order from Microsoft because or Amazon because I'm like, they don't make games for it. They, there's no use really for it. And yeah. uh, I tried to sell them on the, getting him a Switch. Just like if you want, uh, like, there's a camera in here, you got motion control, you got Just Dance, uh, and there's other games that you could use to motion and stuff. Like, I, I really was trying to get him on buying the Switch because um, I think the, when could that Connect 2.0 came out for uh, Xbox One, wasn't it like $100 or something when it first came out? Something like that. The original that, I Connect? Think. You're talking about the original Connect, right? No, the two point oh, the second. Oh, that's one, the it Xbox was one. it was one hundred and fifty, oh, yeah, and then and then they sold the Xbox One for four hundred. But if you bundled them, if you bought the bundle, you save fifty bucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I I ended up getting the the bundle basically day one without getting a day one Xbox though, because okay. I I literally bought mine. I went in. It was funny. I went in that morning when they when they uh first got them at best buy Uh i went i went in and i i asked if they had any left like at the end of that day that they had came in and they're like yeah i think we have three of them left so i ended up getting one yeah i've been lucky with like that with uh new systems when they come out i think i did that with my 360 too when when i went in the the like the end of the day that they were you know that they were released and i lucked out and i think with my 360 i lucked out and got the last one nice so someone didn't pick up their their pre-order and i ended up getting it so uh so it is sad that it is going away i'm sorry jesse (laughs) (laughs) uh can't believe how mad you got in through your arms like that. I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just it's it's a bummer because like, uh, you know, like regardless of what what people say, I I think it was a good addition to the Xbox. Like, like I don't know. It just, well, I mean, like, look at I, I mean, we're doing this podcast right now, and if I didn't have a connect, 
you know i i mean i have a camera on my little kind of dinky computer that i have i could still do this podcast yeah. from that but but it's just so much nicer and easier for me to just do it from my xbox so well i we haven't then they said they now allow for external cameras oh uh, they're to, going uh, be to used. it's not ready yet they're going it's not to. Ready yeah yet. Okay. Yeah. See, if they do that, then I'm fine. I'm okay. But I don't know. I just, I just still, I'd rather I have a connect. I'd rather use it. You know. Right. Like I, I was talking to Corey earlier about this. You know, like, like honestly, would it really have been that big of a deal for them to just throw the port into the new, uh, the new things? So if people want to use it that have a connect, they can. Like, I honestly yeah. don't think it really would have used up that much more space for them to just throw the port in it, you know, to be able to hook it in. I don't know. I mean, I I, I guess it's from the standpoint of where they were looking to phase it out anyways. But still, I mean, I don't know. It's But I can't complain because, you know... Uh, Otherwise, there's a lot of things that Xbox does that, or Microsoft does for Xbox that, that I think you know is perfectly fine and good. This is probably the one, one thing that I've had to complain about that they've done in a while. So, I guess yeah. I'll you know I'll take it. It's one one little you know minor thing that that hopefully won't be a big deal if you can use uh, cameras anyways. Then it, it really won't be that big of a deal because I. I'm sure I can probably find cameras that that will work just as good, if not better, anyways for cheap. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, lucky for you, Jesse. Uh, Xbox Game Pass is getting two new games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Xbox Game Pass is getting ten new games for January. Um. This might be the best <laughs> best month in this program. Um, uh, because of New Year's Day, Xbox Game Pass is getting two new titles. There's some decent variety, including games from Xbox One, 360, and original Xbox. Uh, what's been added on is Bayonetta, Deadlight, Director's Cut, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, Fusion Frenzy, Injustice, Gods Among Us, Metal Gear Solid, Ground Zero, NBA Playgrounds, Tecmo Bowl Throwback, R, uh, WRC 5 World Riding Championships, and Zoo Tycoon. Uh, as for the things that's leaving the program, uh, NBA 2K16 will be dis- uh, be delisted at the end of the month, but that's the only thing that is uh, being delisted. So, you know, if you guys did take advantage of that $1 promotion of Game Pass, uh, you had until January 4th to do it. After that, now it's going to be $10 a month if you guys decide to sign up, but it's still a good thing to have. Uh, for those who are on a budget for getting uh, a lot of great games and stuff. So, um, Bayonetta definitely would be a highlight for me and Devil May Cry 4 if I had it. Um, what about you guys? Yeah, I think I already have. I think I already downloaded Bayonetta. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of good games on there. It's seriously for the price. It's There's a lot of good games on there that I've downloaded. And need to play yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I've been thinking about getting Game Pass for a while, just because it's like honestly, it's a really really good deal. I just I have most of the games that have been added already, so like I'm kind of waiting till they're like, oh yeah, you can uh, play this game that's really really awesome, and you didn't buy it, you know, and like mm-hmm. you know, Metal Gear Five would have been that game for me, except for the fact that they added it to PlayStation Plus the month before, so like. <laughs> I mean, I I got it already, but at the same, and I ended up playing like probably two hours of that game, and I just I don't know, man. I if a if a third person over the shoulder shooter doesn't feel like Gears of War, <laughs> I don't want to play it. Like honestly, I just if it's slightly off, and like you know, Tomb Raider does a pretty good job of doing over the shoulder shooting, and yes. and Horizon did also, and Assassin's Creed did a pretty good job at it too with the bow stuff. But like a shooter, if it, it man, if it's not if it's not pl- playing like Gears of War, I just don't know if I really want to play it. And dude, 
There's something yeah, about I, there's something about Metal Gear uh, that like I want to like Metal Gear Five a lot, and I just can't. Like I just can't. I, it's still in the game case. I brought it used at GameStop. It was like uh, it was like really cheap, like for fifteen dollars. And I'm just like, yeah, I need to start this. <laughs> yeah, I I still haven't touched a Metal Gear Solid game. I think since Part Two. Yeah. Like I. Uh, did they ever? Did they ever remaster Metal, Metal Gear Solid One, like the very first game that yeah. was on PS? Did uh, they? They, re- yeah. they, they, they remade did it, for it. They remade it for GameCube, and then they called it yeah. Twin Snakes. So. Twin Snakes. Oh, Twin and Snakes. And then that one, yeah, and then that one got ported over to PlayStation, and then they did uh, Twin Snakes. Because I think that was the PlayStation. Yeah, because they did when? the uh, collection. No, that that, uh, that was still that was just a download code for Metal Gear One for PlayStation. That was not I, a Twin Snakes thing. I thought they did Twin Mm-mm. Snakes for th- like PlayStation or 360. No, uh, they they did the HD collection, which was two, three, and Peace Walker, and then they did the Legacy collection for yeah. uh, PlayStation Three, which was two, three, Peace Walker, four, and then they gave you a download code for. One and it was a PlayStation Classic. Then yeah. I, then I wonder. It, uh, is it a is it a Nintendo exclusive thing? Yeah. For I mean, as of right now, Twin Snakes is a. It's still stuck on the GameCube. See if they if they ever remade that and remastered it and brought it to like any of the the systems now, I'd probably get that because that still to me is like the only metal gear solid game that i really 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 got into but i but oh. again i haven't i haven't really touched any of the uh the newer ones i have a bunch of them on my system or mm. you know in that games pass there's a couple of them i think and so i i mean i should try some of them but that first one i just i mean it's iconic like you know like the the climbing in the box and hiding in the box and everything and i mean like it, you know like when that came out like that was an ongoing joke and i mean it's still to this day you you see people you know uh like reference hiding in the box and stuff like that and yeah i love yeah. that game yeah you guys right it's, it is stuck on uh the gamecube uh, I guess because Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo must have paid for that. Uh, I mean, I would, I would love for them to like re. What I mean, they could like. I want Konami to like. I don't know. To, I think it would do them a lot of favors if they remastered it for like Switch, and just yeah. gave us Twin Snakes for Switch in the Fox Engine, yeah. like the current Fox Engine. Ooh. Yeah. I mean like yeah, the switch that, is the awesome. switch is powerful enough. I mean it that Fox engine ran on 360 and PS3 cuz Phantom Pain came out on those systems. I know everybody kind of forgets that because of how amazing it looks, but it came out on those systems and it was a relatively small file size. So like you know, if if they kind of took that game and kind of remastered it in the way uh you know of that fox engine like i think it would bring konami in a lot of it would do konami a lot of good to do that it would bring <laughs> good graces their way because like well, I don't... yeah like like how many years has it been since the since that game came out like i could see them doing like a like a uh anniversary I like mean, type like thing next release. this year would be like the 15th anniversary of that game i think it came out well, in 2003 it's, it's 12 years Came out 2005. Metal Gear, uh, the Twin Snakes did. Oh, well, I don't care. 12 year anniversary. Yeah, I, yeah. Edition. Because I, I love that game. Well, it's uh, just so no, iconic. Uh, it would 14, be nice to uh, have. 14 years, March 9th, 2004, uh, that it came out in America. Uh-huh. So it would be 14 years, um, in March. Wow. Wow. Uh, so, so yeah, even next year if they just re- if they released it for their fifteenth year, yeah, that would be, be cool. awesome. That would be cool. 
Yeah. Oh, and last but not least, everybody just want to congratulate the guys at uh, Cuphead. They had hit their two million mark uh, in sales. So once again, congratulations to them. That is our Arsenal X game of the year. So um, I still it's need to cool. Pick that game up. I really need to. Add add your 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 can take the full. Uh... <laughs> you can. T- it's because you bought that game. It reached two million. Yes. You bought the two million. Th- <laughs> yeah. So, uh, congratulations to them. So, uh, that's been our Arsenal news, and now it's time to get into our Arsenal exchange. And uh, because not a lot of news, uh, you know, a lot of people, journalists, and party people at Microsoft will be getting back into uh, the meat of things, like just. You know, getting back to going on. I presented this question to these guys, and I kind of want to get your uh, opinion about them. Uh, does Microsoft offer the best in gaming, and what has been their pros and cons? And I just want to let everybody know that this is going to be across all three platforms. And if you guys want to add PC, that's fine. But between Microsoft, Xbox. Uh, as a brand and platform, do you think they offer the best in gaming? Um, I think I think it kind of like depends on what you're looking for. You know, I mean, like it, it, it's all opinion. I think right now, I think they offer the best box in the X, like hands down. Like I don't, I don't have one, but like you know, everything the OS seems to be running smoothly on that thing, like. It offers straight 4K graphics on most things instead of checkerboarding, you know, like the PS4 does. Uh, it's got the best online service, hands down, in Xbox Live, I think. You know, like, there's no denying that Xbox Live, especially in, on console side at least, like, is the best online service offered, you know. And I think Game Pass mm-hmm. is a great idea. I think Games with Gold is a great service. Uh, I think the only part where they're lacking, and we've talked about this multiple times, is the first party lineup, you know, at this point. Uh, not that, like, Gears of War, Forza, and Halo are bad. I just think they need to, like, add some more. XB. They just need to add add more to their first party. And, and you know, last year was a big year for them, and, and uh, getting PUBG as an exclusive, and Cuphead, and Forza 7 is an amazing racing game. And they launched a new box which is a beautiful piece of hardware and xbox live continues to do great i you know this is the year for games you know and and you know the ev- switch we kind of know what's coming like in general we kind of know what's coming playstation's been giving us a roadmap for what f- three years at this point and yes. and now it's it's microsoft's turn to to give us some games and uh, give us a roadmap, and I know Phil Spencer came out and said, like, you know, he doesn't like to, he doesn't want to announce games too early anymore. But at this point, I think you kind of have to just to like get people excited for Xbox. You know, yes. are they rebooting Fable? Maybe don't give it a name. Maybe just show some concept art or whatever, and say, look, this game's a far out. We don't even have a name for this project yet. Uh, you know, maybe a perfect dark game is in the works. Maybe uh, Battle Toads in terms of like a downloadable 16-bit brawler type thing. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things they could do. Conquer, Banjo Kazooie. Like, there's a bunch of franchises they're holding on to that people love and get are excited for new uh, games in, in those IP. And I think you just need to to get people excited and. You know, announcing Halo 6 coming this fall is not going to get people excited. You know, it'll get Halo fans excited, but not everybody likes to shoot things anymore. You know, it's not 2009 anymore. You know, they they need to expand. They need to get some bigger story-driven games out there. And I think, honestly, I think Perfect Dark is the perfect game, a perfect franchise to do that. Uh, I'm pulling for a good Perfect Dark game. I, I'm not the biggest Perfect Dark fan, but I think that's the IP that has the most versatility uh, in terms of what they could do with it. You know, Banjo-Kazooie and Conker are going to be platformers, right? If you do yes. something with Battletoads, it's going to be some kind of brawler, beat em up you know, something like that, unless you went super extreme and did like a Batman Arkham-style 
Battletoads game, which I don't think anybody really wants. I think that's more reserved for uh, superheroes and Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. Uh, Killer Instinct's fighting game, great fighting game, but again, can't really do a lot with that IP. So uh, they they have a IP that they can be very versatile with in Perfect Dark, and that excites me. And they can be versatile with with Fable also. You know, uh, it can be they can make Fable their Breath of the Wild if they play their cards right. You know, they it has the charm, it has the art style. They just need to put a studio behind it that can take what Lionhead did and really kind of capitalize on that. Uh, well, I know it's been that rumor that they actually got some UK developer to make the next Fable, but they don't know if it's true or not. Well, that's fine. Like, I think I think it needs to be a uh, British studio. Like, it that's where all the charm of that game comes from. Uh, you know, I still yeah, think so we, look, we had that discussion. Yeah, and we I did. Was proven wrong. Yeah, we did. Uh, but you know, all jokes aside, I think Fable could be a great franchise to take that uh, storytelling step. You know, it, it's been it's been a fun RPG with light with really light story. You know, but they could. I mean, I've said this a few times on on the show before, like Fable has that distinction of you play as a character your consequences matter and you have the the aging uh part of the game where as you progress through the game your character ages which is very unique for for a game like that so like they have they can make fable a unique franchise again and and i think that's what they need you know they need their horizon they need their zelda and I honestly think Fable could be it. And I think Perfect Dark could be there. You know, st- I still think you could go a Splinter Cell or a uh, Metal Gear 5 style uh, game with that where it's still kind of open world where you're taking down bases, collecting <laughs> intel from these bases. Like, I think I think those two franchises in particular are there. Uh you know, kind of seek secret weapons. So, uh, but to, <laughs> to get back to the original question, I think Xbox has set themselves up to be the best place to play. They just need to capitalize on their IP and their games and their game development. Okay. What about you, Jesse? Do you think Microsoft offers the, offers the best in gaming? Yeah. I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of the, the same way where, you know, it, it depends. Like, like for me, if if I if we're talking just like straight up PC, you know, between PC, Xbox, and and uh, PlayStation, I'm definitely gonna go with Xbox all day for you know for playing games. Um, just because, like Corey said, you know, like I just feel like their online service. Mm-hmm. in my opinion is the better service and like there's there's so many things right now that i like that i use through their service that i have i've had no problems with whatsoever and um like you know like with the as far as the games and stuff go like you know where we can expect them to you know start rolling stuff out and i i was trying to look for it i just didn't give it much attention because you know you know you know how it is with uh people like sending making articles about like things being leaked and all that you don't know yeah. how much of it is is true but i did actually see a uh, article that was talking about stuff that was leaked and and fable was one of the things on the list that that we were for sure going to be seeing this year um but I, yeah, I, I like I could totally see like if they did use Fable and kind of do a, a Breath of the Wild like style game with that. I think it would be amazing. And like they like in my opinion, Xbox as far as gaming goes has the potential like more potential for me, like for my personal likes in games uh to 
you know, to deliver a lot of stuff that I really would enjoy getting and, and want to play. I mean, already a lot of the games coming out, I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, I'm looking forward to Sea of Thieves and, and, you know, really excited about playing the new State of Decay game once that comes out. And like the Halo games, I, I feel like this like halo five has kind of gotten me back into the halo games again like I, which is kind of funny because a lot of people did not like the story in this you know on that halo but yeah but i like it's i'm weird like that where i when when, when people do something and change something mm-hmm uh-huh. If they do it right, I don't have a problem with it. You know, a lot of people, if you change something dramatically or or you get rid of some kind of character or something, like, people just completely get upset about it. But I f- I'm, I'm the opposite, where, like, I, I feel like sometimes I do want to change, you know, even if they do completely change it up. But as long as they're staying true to what the game is... It doesn't bother me. So I I feel like, yeah, like Xbox has all the things that I want in a, you know, a system as far as hooking it up to your TV and stuff. Like, obviously, I like the Switch because I can bring it other places. You know, if somehow Xbox had the ability to, to <laughs> you know, play it on the on the go that I, you know, it, it would probably be hands down over all systems my favorite. But, like, for me, it's, like, the Switch is kind of in, in its own, you know, area where it's kind of hard for any system to compete with it right now just because of the fact that you can bring it other places, you know. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a two-in-one. It's, you know, I'm not saying that Xbox... It, isn't nearly as good but it's just you can't compete with that with that ability that you know that ability to bring it other places but but yeah i'm i mean there's a reason that i've basically once the first xbox came out you know i basically just stuck with xbox because like there was a lot of games that i liked on ps2 and stuff and but although a lot of those games that that i the reason that I owned a PlayStation or a PS2, all those, most of those games don't exist anymore. They haven't touched those, you know, those uh, games in a while. So I really don't have too much of a reason to, you go know, on. to go go back. So, well, I but, definitely that like the PS2 was, and even this is part even with PS1. It for me personally, like it was the console RPG system. Kind of how like how Super Nintendo was and uh, kind of how DS was, um, it kind of like transitioning into the RPG system for me, um, yeah. with it. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing, you know, like when you to- whenever anyone talks about what's the better system, like I understand why people would rather have a PlayStation over an Xbox because if you Nowadays. like. Uh, yeah, if you like an RPGs, if you like, you know, like those those mainly Japanese kind of influence games, mm-hmm. well, then it's hands down you're going to want a PlayStation because that if you, you know want that's that, if where you the want majority that, of them are. If you want that console experience because yeah. Yeah. like if you really want RPGs you're going to go to the DS you're going to go to yeah. Yeah. uh I mean cuz I I would love to say P- even PSP but I'm just like the only one that really stood out on PSP was the uh Final Fantasy 7 uh um uh, that one that like actual one like that was well, the only I... one that really stood out and I mean like I'm and I'm talking like more of like the more adult like or more adult oriented uh-huh. like style games that are like Japanese like you know like you've got your the Bloodborne and and all those type of games like that kind of stuff just it just doesn't interest me and so you're not going to find that stuff like as as well done on play, on Xbox but mm-hmm. that 
kind of games don't really interest me too much. So, like, for me, like, I like FPS, you know, games. I like, you know, stuff like that. It, and, like, Xbox by far, I mean, they they do it the best. I mean, Halo is way better, than, in my opinion, than, like, uh, a kill zone and all, you know, all those things that kind of PlayStation has tried to do. I mean, mm-hmm. look at that. What's that one game that they had that came out and, like, no one cared that was kind of similar to uh, to Overwatch, that one. Uh, what's that Matt? one? Uh, Matt? Well, there's that. There's Mag that that did horrible too. Like everyone said, it was like the worst game oh, ever. Are you talking about like uh, what's that? New, the newer one that like Lawbreakers? literally, yeah, Lawbreakers. I mean, those. I I feel like that game would have did better if it was on either the Switch, which doesn't have like a game like Overwatch mm-hmm. or anything yet. Or I honestly think that it probably would have done better on Xbox. Not much better, but I still feel like more people who play first-person shooters and games like that are on the Xbox. It's, it's one of so, those, th- this console is the leading system, so uh, we might be guaranteed better sales yeah. by putting it on the system, and it, it's yeah. not that. But but there's a reason why, you know, why those people stick with Xbox is because most of them play on pc and your pc crowd is gonna is you know better better uh it's better justified to buy games uh, for the xbox right now when especially Mm -hmm. when they're doing where you can basically buy a game and you can play it on either pc or xbox you know you don't have to buy it twice so like a lot of those people that like to you know play on pc a lot of the times if they get a box they get a microsoft you know at least for you know all of my friends that like to play on pc they've they've all got xboxes and don't have playstation so i you know i mean but that's just in my case but but i i feel like that those kind of games you know like it just depends on what style of games you like you know that's going to determine either way which one you think is better mm-hmm. but but putting all of that aside like looking at just what the box can do you know without the software just like what it can do i mean if you get the 1x or you get the the um 1s right now those are the only systems that can play Blu-rays, <laughs> which is, you know, I mean, and, and like people complain and, you know, joke and make fun of Xbox for the, you know, like that it's basically an all, all in one entertainment center. Well, guess what? You know, like that was a big selling point for me, being able to do everything on my Xbox. Well, you it, know, it's the same as the PS2. Like it was a DVD player for some people. Like it was yeah. like the cheapest alternative. Like when you like even when the, at the PS2 launch, people were buying more DVDs for the system than the games. Because like they played everything or they got what they wanted and then they had to wait for the library to grow and they would just pop in a DVD and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so many there's you know, like for me, functionality wise, there's just so many more options that the Xbox can offer that that no one else does and that and that's well, why that is true. for well, me. As- on Xbox That's, 360, it did offer HD DVD, but yeah, that fell to the wayside. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that well, that was them trying to not copy someone and trying to, you know, do, and then and then like another another uh, con, I guess for me would be, you know, and and I I feel like all systems, all all the companies do this at some point, but you know, kind of back to the connect again, I it really is a bummer when when companies like make something for for the games like something new and and Mm. when it doesn't do as as good as they they'd hoped it would it's always a bummer to see them completely kill something off instead of just i feel like trying supporting sometimes yeah and just i don't know it's it's one of those this company is doing it so we have to copy them or imitate them so and do it better yeah but they're not good at 
copying slash imitating and doing it better. They can like if you're if you're gonna do it, you have to fully do it and support it. You can't wait for it not to sell and then not work out. Then just go right up abandon it because that yeah. is a big con for Sony. Literally, that, that it happened with the Vita, uh, and I'm sorry, everybody, uh, Sony fans, but you know it's true. Sony did not stock a lot of Vita. We stocked a lot of Vitas after that sister came out during because of the sales. Um, the way they treated Wonder Book. Um, and I mentioned even the Jason uh, from uh, Nurse Gone Platinum. I mentioned to him, I was just like, one of the book books will work so well in schools. Even if it didn't do well at stores, you only put what two games out of it, and then this you just walked away from it from the day that it was released. And it's it's just like you guys didn't a you didn't market this thing well, and b you didn't really show what this purpose was could be. Do 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 do. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing too, though. Like g- going back to that, like like when the when the connect first came out and the, or not con- first came out but as it was kind of starting to to build up on the 360 mm-hmm. like i remember i you know i had my son was was very very young but like seriously the like for the, when they had the uh, connect episodes of like uh sesame street and stuff where you literally uh could act and do things on the connect yeah. And actually interact with the episode and you like had to pick stuff up and put them into things and you, you like you actually got to put yourself into the episodes of of shows yeah it, it was amazing it was awesome like i mean it's unfortunate that that it didn't catch on you know and and all those th- great things that a lot of people didn't really know about ended up being tossed or forgotten about but there was a lot of things that the connect did that that i i thought were amazing and were were so unique and just like you know it helped with learning like you said like it would have been awesome to have something like that in schools where kids could interact with episodes of of you know shows like that i mean they could have kept on doing it they could have done like all different kinds of shows and did that kind of stuff with but, it but jesse they, they allowed you to dance as duke skywalker in a uh, <laughs> star wars thing <laughs> that was a mess <laughs> yeah that that's was the dream bad. yes <laughs> dancing in the cantina or whatever because i i will <laughs> Exactly, because I would have loved for something like written rainbow to be done on the connect to help kids learn how to read and put yeah. them in the story. Like that would have been awesome. That that really yeah. would have been awesome. Yeah, and see, that's the thing is, I I feel like you know, like like at least with PlayStation, when you know their mo- their uh, motion control things, that mm-hmm. was just basically a rip off of of the Wii, you know, Wii controllers. Yes, like. It didn't like really do much for them. I feel like, I mean, they tried to push it, but then at least they took it and they repurposed it, and now you can use them for for the VR, you know, as VR controllers. Yes. You know, at least they actually went through with with saying, okay, well, it's not working doing this, so where can we use them, you know, where else could we use them, or what else could we mix them with, you know, at least they did that with theirs, but, you know, with Xbox just basically saying, yeah, the Connect is dead now, it just, it's just kind of a bummer that it just felt like they really didn't try very hard to to try to you know think of ways to 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 revitalize it again. So or you that, know that uh, for that for me you, is the con. As you, <laughs> as you say, <laughs> yes. Um. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, looking at all three console uh, for Xbox, um, I think it offers some of the best gaming. Um, definitely, we all can agree for online and multiplayer. Um, I think for like with 360, it offered uh, it. You know, it brought us uh, indie ecosystem. 
like you know look at uh live arcade um the uh summer the india summers or summer of indies or stuff like that you know it it allowed um indie developers and that whole uh uh like i said ecosystem to become very popular and very known because uh i i still say this to the day um you know, back if you want to play an indie game, you had to play it on PC, and it was like a fat flash game. You know, Alien Hominid started as a flash game. Um, uh, Cave Story started as an indie game on PC. Like, th- there was just that world only on PC that would had never been to console. And so, with 360, they they pushed it to the forefront and kind of treated it almost as a triple A or first party title. So, you know, if you wanted that great indie experience, you really wasn't going to go to Sony. You was going to be playing that on the 360 and Microsoft offered that, which is good. Um, b- uh, back in the day, uh, Halo was a big seller, you know, you know, and people doing like, uh, doing LAN connections, bringing their systems to people's houses um, and playing it on multiple TVs. Like, that was the... Co- Halo built a uh, in-house community that people were playing it on Friday nights. You was getting a pizza or snacks. You was going over your friend's house and y'all was playing Halo for a long time. Just like, almost like uh, GameCube with Mario Kart Double Dash. People were taking their GameCube, had the little handle thing, and p- putting the controllers in, and was playing. And you know, you never. And, and as a console gamer, you never really had that until I think personally w- was with Halo. Now, I'm not a big. I wasn't a big Halo fan in the beginning. I did not like Halo One. I still think the controls for that original version not the uh collection the original version i still think those controls are janky (laughs) because controlling that warthog is horrendous still but i played all through halo to the point where i had to drive out and i could not do it (laughs) but i but i got to understand more of halo and its history and why people love that series and the community that it built you know microsoft was the only one really doing that um and then you of course you had other titles and for a lot of third party titles on original xbox it went better than playstation 2 you know so it it wasn't it wasn't like uh uh, it, it was kind of like if you couldn't find it on Xbox, but you got a PlayStation Two, then you got to get that PlayStation Two version. Other than that, most third-party games that you were gonna get if you want the better version was on Xbox. And then definitely with 360, you know, exclusivity was a big deal just from third party alone. You know, if you wanted the, all that Call of Duty exclusivity, you had to get it on 360. I mean, you think you of know. the you think of the games that came out and were years and years of exclusivity to Xbox. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, didn't come out until PS4 was almost out on PS3. Uh, Bioshock the, was another one. The trilogy was the only version that you could play uh, Mass Effect. Yeah, the only way you could get that first game was either through the trilogy or you bought it through digitally. Like, yeah. You know, so... Uh, you know, there's so many games like Limbo, Braid, uh, you know, that the once indies started really coming, uh, PlayStation kind of did their own thing, but Microsoft was really, like, pushing for the, the indie rush. And, and you know... Don't, don't get me wrong, PlayStation had cool stuff like uh, Super Stardust and uh, uh, what's uh, Journey and Flow yeah. and Flower and stuff like that. Un- Unfinished Swan is still one of my fav- favorite PlayStation games. You know, that game was awesome. But, like, you know, Microsoft really started everything with, the, with Xbox Live Arcade. And, you know, I found awesome games like N++, one of my favorite games of all time through... Uh, or N plus, I should say, is the first one on yeah. 360. N plus plus on Xbox One. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Shadow Complex. Uh, yeah. You know, there there were a ton of in, of 
of small download only titles uh, for Xbox 360 that were just awesome, you know. So, yeah. Speaking of, isn't Shadow Complex uh, one of the games on uh, on uh, game the the Games Pass? I think it is. I can't remember though. I can't remember. I think so. So yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Is I, I, I could fill up my hard drive if I start downloading all the games that I wanted to play that are on the Games Pass, because there's a lot of them that have just always sounded good that I just never really checked into. Yeah, so I've like, been I've been trying really hard to like keep my hard drive. Like I have Halo, and Gears downloaded, and Rainbow Six. Like I have my multiplayer games downloaded all the time, but I like if there's I've tried to keep only like one or two single player only games on there <laughs> so I can like <laughs> is, it, is it a shame that most of my single player fills up my hard drive yeah like <laughs> I, I mean I have that issue on my PlayStation hard drive where like most of the games on there I, I are have single are single player and you know I have Overwatch and Destiny and uh, uh, what was the other one uh, I forget I forget I'm just too tired right now but like you know, I only have a couple multiplayer games where, like, you know, I mean, like, Bloodborne is a single-player game, but, you know, Moose and Matt have been be- begging me to finish that game, and I'm trying. I'm sorry. Uh, I I I just got to find interest to play Bloodborne. I just... I have the interest. Like, I want to play that game, but I don't want to play it by myself. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I, so, are, I, in I, that game, are you, are you a vampire or... No, I don't. No. I don't really. You know, you're you're a hunter. I, you're uh, hunting like these werewolf beasts and like these giant oh, monsters okay. and stuff. Yeah. I don't really know what's going on. To it's, be honest. it's just like I guess blood is just like energy. Okay. You know, it's it, it's okay, just see, another that's, form. Well, see, that's what I yeah. That's what I was like wondering if it's like a if he's a vampire or whatever because that the whole yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, they don't, so they don't really ever. They don't really ever say. I'm sh- I'm sure there's some hardcore like Wikipedia hole you could fall down and it would yeah, explain yeah. it to you, but that would take like I, three weeks, and I don't really feel like doing or, that. Or or some like fan site where they like completely nerd out about it. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I, that's I tell you how it's like secretly like a, a spinoff of this game. I, or, <laughs> yeah. See the thing. The, I think the problem with Bloodborne for me, and we'll get back into the topic. I think the problem with Bloodborne for me is that after playing like DMC and after playing it like on Turbo, that style of game is just. And I can't really say about Neo because I, I need to start that one. But Bloodborne just seems slow. Well, and it's it not seems the same completely... type of game. I mean, it's not the same type of game. Well, I mean, it could, it, it tries to be, but it's no, not. No, it doesn't. Oh, try and to be, let me tell it's you, but deliberate. let me tell you why. But but let me tell you, but let me tell you why I say that it tries to be because but if you look at Bloodborne and you look at and at, at even like DMC, even though it's not arena based you are surrounded by a lot of enemies and you can move around and attack you is bloodborne is not a one-on-one kind of fighter because you have um i mean and it's not and it's not combo based because you know even though you have like a status bar so i mean it, it separates it that way but i'm like when i'm in a uh a, a, when I'm around a lot of enemies and I have the mechanics of doing a lot of fighting, I want to be able to switch around. I want to be able to kind of somewhat do cool moves, you know, make well, it feel like it's an action though. game. I, I I know that, and and that's why I'm saying for me, DMC and even Bayonetta, like that, the action style genre kind of ruined bloodborne for me because i feel like bloodborne is bloodborne you have to play it safe and you have to you have to you, you, gotta, you always you have, have to, to hit plan and ahead. run away you have to plan ahead yeah. you like like for me like i i get the appeal of those games and for me like mm-hmm. i i probably put like 25 hours in a dark souls one on 360 and i actually really like that game a lot i just i just you, <laughs> It's the kind of game that you have to be in the mood and have the patience for. And, like, I was, I don't really have a lot of patience, and it takes a lot out of me to play those games. Mm-hmm. And, like, 
you know, Bloodborne's a little bit more accessible, if you want to use that term for that type of game, where, like, you know, it's it's faster, it's not, it's more offensive than defensive, but, like, all your moves are very deliberate, and you have to plan your moves ahead while uh, learning the patterns of your enemies, and, like... And dealing with that stupid camera. Oh, I and, hate that Bloodborne and camera. Once, and, like, once you like get the feel of it it's really easy to like over level yourself in bloodborne and like i am like really over leveled to where i'm supposed to be i guess but at Mm -hmm. the same time it's like i still have to find my way to these places and like you know having matt and moose kind of show me where to go and stuff has really been a big help in that game and and that's and probably that's I, I know, and that's good for some people. And yeah, even for you, Corey, that's good. But I just feel like, I, I guess if they had gave me a mode where they didn't limit how how many times you can attack, and you could be able to, and kind of made it an action game. Let's let's put Bud more in the action game, but still make it difficult. Do you think Bloodborne would still resonate with people? Uh, the way that this original intention would this original intention is, no. or just the original one? No, because I I think if you want that, you go play Ninja Gaiden or you play like hard mode on DMC. Like those are, mm-hmm. it's just a totally different type of game. And like I know what you're saying, but that it's like switching genres would just make that game those games. And I think people like choosing how to or- play that game and and upgrading well, i'm their- just saying i'm just i'm just saying offering that mode no i i know i know what you're saying but like at that point i think people would just rather play ninja gaiden on the hardest difficulty or dmc on the hardest difficulty or bayonetta like it's 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 just changing the game at that point and uh you know i think what makes those games unique is that it wants you to think that it's one game and then once you figure it out like for me dark souls dark souls is like a puzzle game almost mm-hmm. you know where you learn the patterns of the enemies and you have to have the correct button combinations when learning those patterns and that's that's how those games work and i think you know that's why people like them because they it brought brought back so much nostalgia of like Mega Man and Castlevania and like old school NES games because you had to learn the patterns of the levels and you had to learn the patterns of the enemies and uh and I think Bloodborne and Dark Souls do a great job of doing it doing that and you know those games are not for everybody like it I mean they they want a very specific audience for those games and that's fine yes. like it's like I try really hard, and I know those games aren't for me, but I appreciate what they do, which is why I want to play them, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I I would just rather play Bayonetta or DMC, to be honest with you. And, like, and and, and and that's why I feel, oh, yeah, and and I guess that's why I feel like for me, and we'll get back to the last part of this discussion for Microsoft. Uh, I think that's why. I, the thing for me is that I've been spoiled by DMC. Definitely played it on turbo mode because there's something about where I could chain my attacks. You know, like my skill is in how I interact and handle in order to survive. Where Bloodborne is, yeah, you have to be strategic, but you still have to run away. And when you offer kind of like a combo somewhat a one button combo based system um and then you have to wait it kind of like it, it, it that shift of of moving away from thinking that you're all powerful because you get to do every you get to do as much as you can or you know like with dmc and bayonetta it's just like if you if you know how to do your dial in combos and move around and be able to target everything and just be able not to get touched you you feel like you are a very skillful player and you can't carry that same skill into the dark souls bloodborne kind of genre yeah but it's a different to, type of skill though well well yeah but i mean people who people who will who will see it that way um 
I mean, you have to, you have to, you know, you can't bring that skill in at all. But if you've been kind of training yourself and you just have that mindset of dollar in combos and stuff, because even me and you, Corey, had that. Or no, I think me and you, Jesse, we had that problem of configuring our buttons for uh, Cuphead. And uh, like we could play something else and be like, oh, man, the controls of this is different, even though it's set up like the other game. Yeah. You know, and you have to kind of like remove yourself from that. Uh, I, I mean, and like I said, that's just me. Uh, you know, it's like, and you're right, Corey. It's not for everybody, um, and they are two separate games. I guess just for me, I I wish that maybe if I could carry my DMC or my action skills to uh, Bloodborne and just be able to wreck havoc. Uh, while still while still having the game be challenging, I, I guess having that game sped up a little bit for me would have been better. And, but that's oh. just for me. That, that I mean that that's just for me because um, I, I could die as many times as I want as I can in in Bloodborne and dealing with the camera and these drab environments and stuff. But it's just it's just like. Sometimes if that's all this is what this game is gonna be, and that's the challenge, it's gonna kind of wear me out. Where I feel like the I could handle any situation in Bayonetta or DMC any way that I want to, and still have and like have fun, you know. But that's just me. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. I was just gonna say, I like. So, like, are those games, would you kind of compare them almost to, like, like, I know this is, like, way different, but, like, like, speed-wise, are they similar, kind of like re- the Resin- the original Resident Evil games, where you've kind of, like, can move forward, but you've got to kind of almost keep your distance and make sure that you have everything that you need in order to be able to kind of, like, take on more than one character at a time? Like kind of that kind of stuff, like, cause like, I, like, cause when I when I think like kind of having to move at a slow pace, mm-hmm. or otherwise it just ends up getting you killed right away, is like what I I always I would think of Resident Evil games, like where where you like you're figuring out puzzles and stuff, but it's like if you just rush into a room, sometimes it's got a whole bunch of zombies or whatever in it, you're you're gonna end up possibly dying right away, but so you've kind of got to move at a slow pace sometimes more slower than you'd like to but so like is that what the game's kind of like where where it's like you want to make sure as long as you have like a good you know weapon or whatever then you can kind of move a little bit faster but you need to make sure that everything's like you've got a decent amount of things to be able to move at a faster pace mm-hmm. or or is it just like all the time you basically got to move slowly through stuff? You kind of basically got to move slowly through stuff because anything could pop out and kill you or okay. attack you. Okay. Um, because there are some sections where you're fighting one enemy, but there might be a section where you're fighting two enemies and then three other people, three in three other enemies just out of nowhere jump into the fray. So now you have to deal with all five of them at the same time. But you're only limited as much as your stamina will allow you to attack. And then you have okay. to wait for it to refill. Okay. Alright. So, I mean, and and a lot of people just like, well, you got to play with me. You got to play with me. And that's all fine. And that's all dandy. That's good. A lot of people would love to do that. And maybe that's what Bloodborne was built upon is that you have to play with other people. I don't like the bell system. I completely think it's stupid. But I understand what Bloodborne is for a lot of other people. I just think for me, I think I've just been ruined by some action games in the speed of them. You know, because hey, I was playing Ninja Guy and getting my tail beat. <laughs> you so know. it's it almost sounds like it's 
like it's an RPG without being an RPG. Like back in the days where you remember where if you went against too many uh, overpowered characters and you mm-hmm. couldn't beat them by yourself, you could do the run away, you know, just run away from them instead of uh continuing to fight so it's almost like doing that without you know having a having it be an option you know that you pick to run away but you still have to fight those enemies in a way yeah yeah oh but you in in that you still have to you can't just like literally run away from them and you can you uh, can you can run away but they'll chase you and okay and uh, they'll wait for you to come back because some areas, in order to progress, you got to go through that, and so you do have to fight them, or they're just going to continue chasing you until you beat them. Okay. So, right. um, but 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 like I said, that's me, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Corey. You're right. You're completely right. They are two different games. <laughs> Why are you smiling like that? Don't get, please don't be mad at me. I love you. <laughs> well, that was and that was pretty much it, wasn't it? Anyway, <laughs> ready to wrap, wrap the show up so you guys can get a little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but Corey knows I I I enjoy him and I agree with him for a, a lot of things. Um, we just sometimes have different viewpoints, and that's what makes us. Bro, hands that 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 what works for us and stuff. Yeah, trust me. We all it, wait till you see the latest. Oh, uh, if you have not seen Power Block, watch Power Block this week. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't be very entertaining if we all just agreed all the time? Oh, he knows when I come back, I'm gonna buy him three chicken uh, burgers from Wendy's. <laughs> Dude, they're dollar twenty nine now. It made me mad that they increased thirty cents. Yeah, while McDonald's McChicken sandwiches went to a dollar. <laughs> oh, I'm angered. I'm angered by this. Three dollars used to get me three sandwiches. Now three dollars only gets me two sandwiches and four dimes. <laughs> Angers me. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, tell we've been recording for two and a half hours (laughs) yes (laughs) oh yeah it is it is holy crap (laughs) well a lot of from look a lot from talking from other stuff but everybody that is going to be the show um uh, I I just we all think that Microsoft offers some of the best thing. Definitely a lot of their functionality, um, like their online structure and some and some great games. They offer that in the best of game. Uh, and there are some pros and cons, but like for any console, there's always going to be pros and cons and stuff. Uh, but we would like to um, know what you guys think. Does Microsoft offer the best in gaming with their Xbox brand? And what are some of their pros and cons? Uh, you can email us at arsenalxpodcast at gmail.com. Do follow us on Twitter at arsenalx at Arsenal X Podcast. Um, we have a community on Xbox, uh, Arsenal X. You guys, we have a uh, Instagram account, correct, Corey? Yep. Uh, isn't it Ar- it's is at it Arsenal, Arsenal X Podcast. Yep. At Arsenal X Podcast on Instagram. Um, you can join us at Nurse Gone Wrong on Facebook. Uh, check out our content on NurseGoneWrongRadio.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nurse Gone Wrong Radio. Um, you guys can find me on um, Xbox as the Lyrical One, capital D A L Y R I C A L number one. And you can follow me on Twitter at that retro code court. Um, Jesse, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at, at sub or underscore humanist. And then also we have, uh, I guess, we have an NGR Radio uh, Twitch page, too, that we probably, if people are interested in, that might see a little bit more stuff going on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Twitch.tv slash NGR Radio. We're going to be recording, uh, hopefully, if it's on Thursday, the Nintendo Direct, we're going to do a watch along. So. Yes. Oh, and also, everybody, join our Facebook page, Arsenal X. Yeah. Uh, I'm... Uh I I want uh also before I plug my stuff uh expansion 
pass launches this week so fr- friday friday at noon expansion pass uh it's a little if you're familiar with uh mgr b-sides or pow blocks expansion pack expansion pass is just like a small segment and this week's uh episode is all about the uh ninja turtle uh who we want to make a ninja turtles game so yeah that's gonna be a good episode <sighs> I'm excited. Pretty good. I'm so excited it's for that. Uh, but you can find me at Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram and on a plethora of NGR radio shows. So uh, download our family of shows and uh, like, subscribe, and share, and comment, and email, and follow on Twitter and inst- Instagram now. And we're all over the place. So, <laughs> yes. And as always, everybody, <laughs> we throw up the X. <laughs> I, love, I, love, I love how I love how me is in, and Jesse was in sync. It encourages us. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> as always, we throw up the X. And we're about to exit out of here, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Arsenal X Podcast. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.